A flex box container in Alimentor is not just a box. It is what controls your whole layout. And if you ignore this flexbox settings, your design will break and you will keep adjusting things forever. But don't worry, because in this video, I will show you how to use this flexbox container settings the right way. So your workflow is faster and your design stay clean from the start. So let's get started. Okay, so first thing first, open your page in Elementor Editor, click this plus icon, then Flexbox, and you know this part, right? You get all these container structures. Let's just pick this simple one and we have a container. Okay, let me just quickly drop some widgets in it and give it a little touch. Now, click the container. Okay, now the first thing you should notice here is this item menu. And trust me, if you set it right here, half of your layout struggles are already solved. So let's look at the first option, direction. Okay, you see how all my items are stacked one below the other? And that's because the container is in the column direction. But when you select this to the row direction, everything now sits side by side. And this saves you from dragging and dropping a dozen containers just to line things horizontally. And this reverse direction, it lets you reverse the order of your items with just one click. Now let's say you want a layout where some items stack top to bottom while the others stack side by side. Super simple. Just click a two column layout from your Flexbox structures, then set one child's container direction to the column and the other child container direction to the row. Now just drop your elements inside the ones you want stack top to bottom go in the column container and the ones you want in a row go in a row container style them up according to your design and that's it you have mixed vertical and horizontal layout without any extra effort okay then we got these two options the justify content and the align item basically these decides the position of your elements or your widgets inside the container now here's an easy trick to remember if your container is working left to right, like in a row direction, then justify controls the start, I mean, as left, middle, and right. And the align controls the top, middle, and the bottom. But if your container is in column direction, then it's the opposite. The justify controls the top, middle, and bottom, and the align controls the left, middle, and right. So together, these two give you full control over positioning. Just make sure your container has enough space height-wise, like from top to bottom for vertical movement, and enough space width-wise for horizontal movement. And one thing I really like, if your elements feel too cramped together, you don't have to mess around with margins. You just click these options like space between, space around, or space evenly for spreading items evenly. So yeah, instead of adding margins one by one, you let the container handle it for you. And it's way more responsive. Okay, then comes the gap setting. So let's say you're building a section with several items next to each other, but either they feel a bit too cramped or too spaced out. But you want the spacing between them in a way that they sit nice to each other and feel balanced. So normally you would have to go into each item add margin manually to each and it takes forever but with the gap setting it's super easy and quick just select the container that holding these elements go to the gap setting and first set the row and column gaps to zero then you can either control the gaps between the rows and column all together or unlink them and adjust them separately you only set your gap once and Alimentor automatically spaces everything evenly inside the container, whether in row or column. And here's the best part. This gap setting is responsive. You set it once for desktop and Alimentor adjusts the spacing automatically on all the other screens too. Okay, now my favorite, the wrap. This basically decides whether all your elements inside a container stay in a single line or they adjust themselves and move to the next line when the first line gets crowded or maybe there is no space left. Imagine adding a bunch of elements side by side in a container. Without wrap, they all try to squeeze into one long line, which can make your design look messy or break on smaller screen. Now, watch this. 
Just click on the container and turn on wrap. Suddenly, Elementor moves extra item to a new line automatically. This keeps your layout control and easy to manage without adding extra containers and struggling with margins and padding. But that's the basic use of wrap. Wrap is much more powerful than this simple flow control. Look at this layout that I built. A heading and a text sitting nicely on the first line and three images lined up below them. And here's the best part. It is all inside one single container. And trust me, it matters. The less nesting you do, the cleaner your structure and faster your page load. So let me show you how exactly I did it. So I've got one container set to the row direction and inside it, I dropped five widgets, a heading, a text editor, and three images in total. By default, everything sits in one row, all squeezed together. Okay, let's go to the container and turn on wrap. See, the elements have adjusted themselves into separate rows based on the space they needed. But that's not the kind of the layout we want, right? We needed the heading and the text to stay together in one row, and the three images should line up side by side in row below it. So here's where the trick comes in. I will just Go to my heading, go to the advanced tab and in the width, set a custom width to maybe 40. I do the same for the text editor. Remember, these width values aren't universal. They depend on your layout. Just adjust the number until everything aligns the way you want. And now both of them are sitting nicely side by side in the first row. Next for the images, I set a custom width of about 29 on one image and copy the same width to the others. And since wrap is on, they automatically shift and line up perfectly in second row. So now I've got heading plus text in the first line and three images in the second, all inside a single container. And that's why wrap is so powerful. Instead of dragging in multiple containers or hacking margins, you just let the container handle the flow. Clean, simple, and responsive. Now, very simple and easy, the container setting. Okay. So the reason I talked about the item setting at the start of this video is because if you understand them first, everything else becomes a piece of cake for you. So in the container setting, we get container layout and Elementor gives you two choices here, Flexbox and the grid. And as you know, this video is only focused on the Flexbox because it's the most popular and the powerful. But if you want to learn how grid is different from Flexbox, we have a separate video for that. So moving on, we have the content width. So you get two options, boxed or full width. Now the box means the container will have a maximum width so your content stays nicely centered on the page with space on either side. It is what most websites use for readability. And full width, it stretches the container content all the way across the screen, edge to edge. So when do you use which? Box is great for section where you want some breathing space on the sides. For example, the promo cards, the icon boxes, the testimonial, or any content that looks better if it's centered and not stretched out. While the full width works best when you want big backgrounds or wider section. For example, the header, the hero section, the full width image banner, or anything that you want to give modern or immersive look. Okay, then below it, you control the exact width of your container. You can drag the slider or type a number and adjust it according to your design. Finally, there's mini height. By default, the container height adjusts automatically based on the content inside it. The more and the bigger you add, the more it will increase. But if you want to make sure your container has minimum height, like for hero section or to balance the design, you can set it here. A good starting point is around 400 pixels, but feel free to change it depending on your needs. And here's a quick tip. If you want your container to take the full height of your visitor screen, instead of fixed pixel value, you use the VH. I mean the viewport height unit. Just enter 100 VH in the height field and Elementor will make the container always fill the full screen height. See, follow these pink lines on the screen. This is awesome for making immersive full screen section easily. So that's it for the layout settings of Elementor Flexbox container. Now this was just the start. In the next video, I'll walk you through the advanced setting of Elementor Flexbox container, like margins, paddings, the position, and so much more. Basically, the tools that let you fine tune your design at much deeper level. So don't miss it. Stay tuned and subscribe to the channel.